Welcome to Rogers Center Friday night. First of three against the Detroit Tigers. Tigers in town for the first time. This is the last team the Blue Jays haven't played against. This is a long time rivalry that has lost some of its luster because the Tigers and Jim Leland have moved into the AL Central. They have been a red hot team just like the Oakland Athletics were when they came to town. 53 and 46 for the season. Miguel Cabrera is really hit well in this ballpark. 322 average, six doubles, four home runs, and 10 RBIs. He's batting third in the lineup and the top of the order. He's got a lot of speed. 25 stolen bases between Austin Jackson, the center fielder, and Quinton Berry, the left fielder. Prince Fielder signed as a free agent and really solidified this lineup. He has got quite a presence in the middle of that order. Certainly does, and Carlos Villanueva is going to have to really pitch tonight. He's come out of the bullpen to make his fifth start. He has come out to help the rotation, although he's throwing better than any starter right now. He takes his 5-0 record to the mound. He has won three consecutive starts to go to 5-0, and right now he's going to have to keep the strikeouts coming, something that he has done with regularity since moving into rotation defensively tonight for the Blue Jays. Here's how they line up. Snyder, Rasmus, and Ghost will be in the outfield. Lori Vizquel, Johnson, and Jan Gomes over at first base. Adam Lynn was in the original lineup. He was scratched, and Jan Gomes takes over at first base. And he put on the display, I thought, in yesterday's ball game with his glove. It was outstanding. First pitch of the ball game to Austin Jackson is downstairs for a ball. Jackson, a 321 average. He has really made some good adjustments at the play. He's eliminated that leg kick, and boy, oh boy, he's cut down his strikeouts, and the average has shot up. Just wasn't getting himself ready to hit. Wasn't getting that front foot down, so they've tried to eliminate it and have a lot, a lot of movement early. Now he's very quiet and using his hands a lot better. Austin Jackson, the last two years, 170 strikeouts and 80. 181 strikeouts still shoots the ball the other way as good as anybody I think in the American League This is with that fastball down and away. It's three and one you got to keep these two guys off the bases ahead of the three four spots Cabrera and Fielder. Popped in the air to the left Travis Snyder comes in a few steps. One down. Take a look at the scatter report for Carlos being away. We're brought to you by Home Hardware. Homeowners helping homeowners. I think he prepares better than anybody on this staff. Uh, he doesn't blow you away with his stuff out on that mound, but he understands pitching better than anybody. He's got the fastball to change up the slider and the curveball. He has used his slider for the changeup a lot this year. Curveball basically a show me pitch. Get it over at times, but he's been able to heat up with the fastball and strike a lot of guys out with that slider. Quentin Barry, the 27-year-old rookie, makes one downstairs. Barry's an interesting ball player. Comes out of San Diego State. Played for Tony Gwynn at San Diego State. Pops this ball into right. Anthony goes, gives way to Colby Erasmus goes surprised that Erasmus was there. Colby has the priority in center and didn't look like Anthony Ghost hurt him. Yeah, we have seen this the last two nights now. Once in left field with Travis Snyder and once now in right field with Ghost. These are two different outfielders that Rasmus is playing with. And you can see Ghost, he is calling for it, but he's got to give way when the center fielder calls him off. It didn't look like Colby Erasmus called for it. I didn't see him call for the ball. Anthony Ghost was calling all the way. So Miguel Cabrera hits with nobody on and two outs. That's a perfect setup for Carlos Villanueva. Yeah. Let's see Cabrera and Fielder come up with nobody on base. 325 average. This is a tough lineup for any pitching step. Change up, cut the bottom of the strike zone. It's a ball in the strike. Carlos Villanueva can really pitch. He understands who he is. He doesn't try to do anything more than he's capable of doing. And he's going to have to mix it up to cool off the red hot bat of Miguel Cabrera. Well, the first thing he is, he's a pitcher. 
He, he understands his strengths and the batter's weaknesses, and he knows how he can get guys out. Take a little off, put a little on, move the ball around the strike zone. As a club, the Tigers are hitting 269 at the start of play tonight. It's fielder in the cleanup spot. Boy, you talk about a tremendous one-two punch in the middle of the order. Great right-handed hitter and a great left-handed hitter. Uh, goes too far. Breaking ball. Let's see if he goes. And at the end, he was the one who asked to check right there. He said, go check the umpire. Ask him if I went. <laughs> Played umpire says, I don't have to. Side. Popped foul. Out of play. But one thing about Cabrera is such a good run producer. He has 82 RBIs, and when he gets two strikes, well, he really cuts down his swing. Uses his hands just a little bit more. You, you won't see a big stride or a high leg kick from Miguel Cabrera. He can use the whole field. That's why that batting average is up to 325. To go along with the great power, but you're right. He'll cut it down just a little bit with two strikes. Drives this ball to the left. Travis Snyder looking up. Miguel Cabrera. A two-out home run. Number 25. And the Tigers have jumped out to a one-nothing lead. That was an excellent two-strike approach, and he is so strong he can knock the ball out of the ballpark even when he's not giving his all. Two strikes. He's going to spread out just a little bit more. He won't have a lot of movement. Watch him just use his hands. It looked like a changeup on the inside part of the plate. Doesn't move. The lower half doesn't move. It's just the hands, and he's able to power the ball out of the ballpark. Picks his heel up and just puts it right back down and knocks it out for number 25. His 302nd career home run. Prince Fielder pops it up. Over near the seats and back out of play. Well, that was a great example of how you hit with two strikes. You don't have to generate a lot of movement with your body. Just use your hands. And he was all over that changeup. Yeah, because he is so strong and so big, those kind of guys knock him out of the ballpark. Players like us, we just maybe foul him off or maybe get a little scratch single. Prince Fielder hits one high and deep to right. Bode Erasmus at the wall. Home run, Prince Fielder. Back to back home runs. With two outs. It's a Tiger team that's hot. You said it when you were talking about their lineup. They have come in here a very hot heat, a hot team. 16 home runs now for Fielder. Same way, does a great job waiting back on that breaking ball. Stays back and launches it to right center field. That's what they brought him in here for. Provide some pop and some protection for Miguel Cabrera. They have really turned into a great tandem. Not only what they do, but how they prepare for a game. They talk a lot about pitchers who they're facing. And use one another's experience to really have good at bats. They're not just one dimensional type of hitters. You mentioned the left hander, the right hander. They're both very good hitters. And with power and production, it's one of the best, I think, in baseball. Delman Young fouls it up the first baseline, and you can see Rick Porcello, the starting pitcher. He knows who to sit next to. <laughs> <laughs> sit next to the big boys. Porcello, just 23 years old, and Prince Peter just says, that enough for you? <laughs> Bookends. <laughs> Delman Young, average at 269. He, too, has got some pop. He has 11 home runs. This team a while to get untracked. He had got off to a slow start. Jim Leland, the manager, kept saying, hey, boys, we're going to be just fine. Let's not panic. 
We got a chance to see them in spring training and they were impressive. Yeah, we were shocked when they got off to such a, a rocky start this year. Right at the end of spring training they faced Henderson Alvarez and put on a show. They had line drives all over that ballpark. Two and two two outs breaking ball was down and away. Ball just foul outside of third. Jeff Mathis going to do the majority of the catching while JP Aaron Sevier men's on the disabled list. And John Farrell, the manager, said he's going to be careful with Jeff Mathis, just can't run him out there every day. He making his 27th start of the season, and he's going to have to make sure that he doesn't throw him back there too often. So Jan Gomes will catch tomorrow. Give Mathis that day off. Gomes has been a nice addition to this ball club. Versatile, he can play first and third. He's even spent some time in the outfield. Not that that he was a bench player, but he wasn't starting and playing a whole lot. Jeff Mathis, it's tough to just take a guy and then throw him in there right away. You'll wear him down a little bit quick. A two out walk. So Carlos be in the waiver. Retired the first two batters with fly balls, and then Miguel Cabrera, Prince Fielder, went deep. Now he's walked Delman Young. Fielder still talking to Porcello. But Porcello is 23 years old. Brennan Bosch. Bosch is the right fielder tonight. Boy, Tigers are having good at bats. They're very patient and trying to wait, be in their way out. These numbers are going to be familiar. Everybody in this lineup is starting to heat up. Bosch over his last 17 games, He's over 300. Got a little bit of everything to the Tigers offensively. They've got some speed at the top, they've got good balance, good power. <laughs> They got a nice balance of left handed hitters and right handed hitters making it tough for the pitcher to go out there and just pitch one way. Jim Leland's team is on a roll right now. Ball on the strike to Brennan Bosch. Two outs. Inside. Jim Leland has the experience to guide his team through rough spots and that's what he did early in the season. Nobody really panicked. Leland is the active leader in wins by a manager. He has a way of deflecting all of that onto himself you know, through the media if things aren't going well. He can go hey it's my job I had a terrible day today managing or I should have done this or I should have done that and that's the reason why we lost today. It really takes a little pressure off of the players and let them just go out there and just play the game. Now, if you need a little kick in the behind, that guy can do that too. <laughs> He's got a lot of experience in that too. <laughs> two balls, two strikes. Tigers have taken a two-nothing lead. The check and Mathis is going to tag Bosch and he went too far and he will strike out to end the inning. But Carlos Villanueva ran into a first inning buzzsaw. Miguel Cabrera with two outs. It's his 25th home run of the season. And right behind him the left handed hitting first baseman Prince Fielder back to back home runs 2 nothing, Detroit.
falling behind early. 2-0. Jeff Mathis, a seven-game hit streak, and he's hit with some authority. Four doubles, two home runs. He's driven in four during that stretch. Top of the order. A little bit different tonight. Brent Laurie leading off. Omar Vizquel starting for a second consecutive day. Moves in at shortstop. Colby Rasmus, Edwin Encarnacion is the DH. Kelly Johnson moves into the number five spot. Gomes, Snyder, Mathis, and Ghost round out the lineup, and they've got a tough pitcher on the mound in Rick Porcello. He comes into the series a very hot pitcher. Now in his third season, he has filled out and he's throwing harder, and I think that's one of the reasons why he has been a lot better of late. He hasn't lost in his last five outings. Porcello is a heavy sinker ball pitcher, so you might see a lot of balls on the ground. Here's defensively, they were lined up, tied for six fewest errors in the American League. The Detroit Tigers, Barry Jackson and Bosch in the outfield. Jackson can go get it in center field. Peralta and Fonte up the middle. Cabrera fielder bookend on the infield. Avila behind the plate. Yeah, and Omar and Fonte at second base might be the missing link for this defense. They needed a second baseman, and he's filled in nicely since coming over from Miami. But Laurie goes after the first pitch and fouls it off. And the Tigers weren't getting any production whatsoever from second base. And, of course, Dave Dombrowski, the GM, has a relationship with the Florida Marlins, and now Miami Marlins front office. So he saw that they had the ability to move Infante, and not only did they get Infante, they got Annabelle Sanchez as well. Ground ball to Cabrera. Lost the diamond, one down. Take a look at the scouting report for the young start of the Tigers, Rick Porcello, and he's got a great sinking fastball, one of the best ground ball ratios in baseball. A 1-8-9 ground ball to fly ball ratio, so he will use his fastball a lot. A little bit of a slider, a little bit of a change up and a curveball, but basically it's going to come right after you. And the difference that we have seen from Porcello is he's using his fastball and he's throwing it inside and outside. To both lefties and righties. There's that dramatic sinking fastball. He Omar also... Vizquel, excuse me, Pat. Omar Vizquel batting second. It's the 205 average. Was not in the original lineup when John Farrell posted it this afternoon. You know, Escobar was in the lineup along with Adam Lynn, and both of them had to scratch right around 5 36 o'clock because of back tightness. And scale pops it down the left side out of play. Escobar came out early, took batting practice. He looked fine during that early batting practice session, then took some ground balls off the bat of Brian Butterfield, and then took his normal BP and then just didn't feel right. So they scratched him, pulled him out of the lineup. One and two. Ball's hit down the right side. That ball is trouble if it's fair. It is. Brennan Bosch plays it on the second hop. This girl will get into second standing up. Ball wide of second base, and Clinton Berry was backing up the play. Omar Vizquel, his first extra base hit of the season. Right down the line, it looked like. Porcello tried to go inside, and Escal just drops the head of the bat on that ball. He's done it hundreds and hundreds of times in his career, right down the right field line, and then hustles in for an extra base hit. And right now, there he is on the all-time hits list. No more of his scale, number 43. There's six behind Harold Baines. Alex Rodriguez is well within his sights. Babe Ruth and Pete Rose. Well, the Erasmus gets jammed and bounces right back to the pitcher. So Vizquel moving up the all-time hit leaderboard. He's got a legitimate shot, of course, in passing Harold Baines in the 42nd spot all-time. 140 hits now away from 3,000. He hasn't had a more than 100 hit season since 2007. Not an everyday player, but getting some extra playing time now with the injury to Escobar. And he's just 13 hits away from Babe Ruth. Unbelievable, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> what a career. Edwin Encarnacion. He tied up the ball game yesterday with a dramatic three-run home run, bottom of the fourth inning. 
of Tommy Malone. And that home run seemed to energize the Blue Jays. They had been shut out 12 straight innings by the Oakland A's until that home run by Esco, uh, excuse me, by Encarnacion, and then the offense took off. Going into that inning, they were behind three nothing, and they would go on to score 10 runs. Well, Porcello might not want to throw that one again. <laughs> it was a spinning breaking ball that stayed on the inner half. Porcello in his fourth season, just 23 years old. Broken bat that will get in through the right side. Vizquel's being waved home, and there'll be no throw. So Edwin Encarnacion drives in his 71st run of the game, and he cuts the tire lead in half. A little bit better slider that time by Porcello in a better spot for when a good hitter is hot. He seems to find holes. Ball down and away. Encarnacion is going to break his bat. He has stayed on that pitch so much better this year. Down and away, and he just squeaks it through the right side. Because the ball wasn't hit that hard, that's going to allow the skill to score. Boy, that is such an emotional boost to get one back right away. <laughs> Kelly Johnson had a home run in the game yesterday. It came in the seventh inning, leading off the seventh. It was the 11th home run of the season. Speed pitch and Porcello is out in front one and two. Rick Porcello went to the mound his last start to pitch the top of the ninth. He'd never thrown a complete game. He was three hitting the White Sox through eight innings and got a standing ovation from a sellout crowd at Comerica Park. First two batters got singles and he was out of the game. He's never thrown a complete game and it looked like a great situation for him but after back to back singles to start the top of the night Jim Raymond made a pitching change and he said it was a great feeling having the fans give you a standing ovation as you went to the mound for the night Kelly Johnson bounces it to short Johnny Peralta across the diamond in time and the inning is over but the Blue Jays get one back Edwin Encarnacion an RBI single to right. Mr. Sub Sports Bag Day will take place Sunday, July 29th. This Sunday, when the Tigers wrap up this three-game series, the game starts at 1:07 p.m.
The first 20,000 fans will receive a sports bag courtesy of Mr. Sub. For tickets, call the Blue Jays at 416-341-1234. Log on to BlueJays.com or stop by most Rogers Plus locations. Mr. Sub Sports Bag Day is the longest running promotion in club history. They've had a great relationship with the Blue Jays over the years, and they're going to give away beautiful sports bags on Sunday. Johnny Peralta, the shortstop. It's a high fastball in fouls it straight back. The Tigers sent six men to the plate in their half of the first. Miguel Cabrera and Pitts Fielder hit back to back home runs. That's a good pitch. Fastball caught the outside corner. Came out firing strikes to the first two batters, got two flyouts, and then a couple of home runs, back to back home runs off of Via Nueva. But then the walk to Young felt like he wasn't his aggressive self. Right now, he's got to go right back to pitching aggressively with conviction and throwing the ball in the strike zone. These are two great hitters, Cabrera and Fielder. You make a mistake, that's what they're supposed to do with those pitches. Let's go back to being aggressive and get right after him. Off speed pitch. And Ben Waven knows that he and Fielder were teammates in Milwaukee. He's seen that act before. It's the first time he faced him, and everybody knows about Miguel Cabrera. He's a great two strike hitter. He's a run producer, and he puts the ball in play. Foul back. That's a good aggressive pitch right there. Two and two. You want to do something right there on that two two pitch and it went right after. We are getting confirmation now but apparently the Brewers have sent Zach Grinke to the Angels in exchange for the minor league shortstop John Segura who is the top prospect mm -hmm. in their organization and a couple of double A pitchers Ken Rosenthal. Fox Sports is reporting that and there have been several other reports across the wire but it sounds as though the Angels are going to get much needed pitching help with Zach Frankie. Throughout the strikes up huh? back to back strikeouts. Ball struck out to end the top half of the first and now Peralta goes down. The change up right there you see him dig it right back into his fingers and then throw it with a great arm speed. That really throws off the batter. Peralta was looking for the fastball, got the change up. Good pitch right there by Villanueva. Of course, the Angels are five games back of the Texas Rangers. They're half a game ahead of Oakland in that AL West race. Boy, they now have five big league veteran legitimate starters that we can throw out there. Every night. Does this make Texas counter move that? Oh, I believe so. I guarantee you, Texas was in that mm -hmm. trade conversation with Milwaukee as well. They, like the Angels, have some top prospects that could have been included in the trade, and Texas needs pitching help too. Does Texas, I don't want to say panic, but a little panicky now and say we need a pitcher will overpay for a pitcher. I have seen that happen in this game before that one team goes ahead and trades for somebody the other team says boy they start panicking and start giving away the farm. Avila pops it foul. Yeah you're right and I think that is going to trigger some more moves and some counter moves from other organizations not only the Texas Rangers but guys will start looking around and saying, okay. Hamels was off the list when he signed the contract extension. Now Grinky appears to be off the list, so they continue to go a little bit lower down the pitching list and see who's might be available. Another off-speed pitch pull foul. I think the Tampa Bay Rays, excuse me, but Tampa Bay Rays are sitting very pretty now. That if they want to move James Shields to possibly Texas, they could name their price. Yeah, and there's a lot of interest in several pitchers in that Tampa Bay's rotation, including Jeremy Hellickson and Wade Davis. 
Many people and a lot of scouts believe that David Price is the best pitcher right now in baseball. And he's thrown the ball very well. But they have Wade Davis who's really thrown the ball well mm -hmm. out of the bullpen. They can put him into the rotation if they should trade Alex or Shields. But there are a lot of options for Tampa Bay. Quite a battle going on here between Alex Avila, the Tiger catcher, and Villanueva. You look at the Angels' starting staff. Jared Weaver leads it with a 13 and one record. C.J. Wilson is nine and six. Jerome Williams just came back off the disabled list. He is probably going to be on the way out. Dan Hare and Irvin Santana. Before you add Zach Greinke to that mix, and that really yeah. becomes a deep rotation. Aaron hasn't been throwing well. He just came off the disabled list with some back issues, and I expect him to start throwing like he has in the past. Santana's a mystery. He's four and ten with a six ERA, and has given up 23 home runs. Three-two pitch, another pop up. Boy, the Tigers are really making me in the way of a throw a lot of pitches early in this game. That's 46 pitches already. 29 in the first inning to get to those six hitters. Only gave up two hits. But a walk and a lot of foul balls. And you're right now up to 46 here with one out in the second. And Avila will take the walk. It's his second walk issued by Villanueva. It comes with one out in the second. John Farrell knows that his starting staff has really had to be put together with Haywire trying to plug some holes when they lost those three starters in their rotation back in June. Ian Wave has done a good job. This is his fifth start. Falls behind again. Omar Infante, the veteran, just acquired by. The Tigers and he spent the early years in his career with Detroit so they knew him very well. Those are his combined numbers between the Marlins and the Tigers a 281 average. Yeah you make a mistake and he can lose it. Eight home runs for Infante. But he gives him a little bit better defense at second base. Veteran hitter. Two things that the Tigers were missing or they had to go out and get I think if they wanted to seriously think about competing was one more starter and a second baseman and with one phone call one one move they were able to go out there and get Sanchez and Infante they gave up a good pitching prospect but I emphasize the word prospect in Jacob Turner mm -hmm. 21 year old big right hander he really looks like he's going to be a fine big league pitcher. But at second base, they were getting nothing. A 201 average, two home runs, and 25 RBIs. They'd have used four different starters at second base. Well, you can see the Tigers certainly have made up their mind. They're going to sit off speed pitches. Mm -hmm. They're looking off speed against being the waiver. And if you don't get those over, that's why a that pitch total is going to climb and climb fast. So he's got to use that fastball. Be a little bit more aggressive with it. Lined in the center field. Rasmus backs up a few steps. He thought there were three outs. He started to run toward the dugout, and Omar Vizquel quickly called for the baseball. Now there's two outs. He knows it now. <laughs> so Infante lines out to center. I'll turn the lineup over. Austin Jackson popped up to left field his first time up. Well, Mathis and Villanueva put their heads together and have decided to see if they can't pitch a hit. Throw first pitch strength to Austin Jackson. Yeah, use that fastball.
got a couple of weapons that he can use to get the outs. His curveball's good, his slider, is his strikeout pitch, and his changeup. But you got to get to that point. And I think you've got to get those Tiger hitters thinking fastball. I think you're right on that right now they are looking off speed pitch from being a waiver. And he gets that slider in there for a strike. He's ahead 0 and 2. One thing John Farrell really likes about Carlos Villanueva is that he reads bats very well. Which means he can pick up on what the hitters are trying to do and then he can make the adjustments. And he knows himself also. He's no, he knows he's not a big power pitcher that he can just throw his fastball by. Those hitters, he's got to set them up. He's got to use all of his pitches. He's got to have good sequences with his pitches to get big league hitters out. And he understands that. This has popped into right field. Anthony Ghost is there, makes the catch. The inning is over. Blue Jays trail 2 1 as they will bat bottom of the second. Jan Gomes at first base tonight had an RBI in yesterday's game. Travis Snyder got things going with a sacrifice bunt, and Jeff Mathis has a hit streak alive. Sportsnet brought to you by your local independently owned home hardware and building center location. Homeowners helping homeowners. That is the scene outside gate 10 here on Friday night. It's Summer Fan Fridays presented by Schneider's Grillums, and you can see it appears to be a huge success. This is the second in a series of Summer Fan Fridays they're going to have. Come inside early and go back outside. Gate 10, and they have live music, entertainment, and a lot of great activities. So come on down. Next Friday, Summer Fan Friday, will take place August 10th when the Yankees are in town. Jan Gomes. It's the first pitch from Poor Silva for a strike. Gomes picked up an RBI on a sack fly in the eighth inning of yesterday's game. Have to get used to chasing that sinker, but that's where Porcello lives down the bottom of that strike zone. Thanks for having a ball. And we're glad you're here. Should be another good turnout tonight. Blue Jays had a big crowd yesterday afternoon, 39,000 on Thursday afternoon. It's a breaking ball. Cabrera throws on the run, on the money. Gomes has retired. Miguel Cabrera doesn't have that huge range like a Brett Lorry, but boy, he's got good hands and a very true arm. Did he come up as a shortstop with the, the Miami Marlins and then they moved him into the outfield and then 
This is when he was like 19 or 20 years old, so he, he wasn't as big as he is right now. He came up as an infielder. And then they moved him into the outfield. Then over to first base, but you're right. So much has been said about the Detroit Tigers defense. And they have guys, pitchers who are ground ball pitchers, so you need a good inner defense. The range factor might not be there, but the catchability factor certainly is. Travis Snyder. Another bouncing ball on the infield. Fielder with a good play. Throws behind Porcello, but they're in time to get Snyder. Fielder got a tricky hop, and his throw was behind Rick Porcello, who had to reach back, and that slowed down his momentum toward the bag at first. That's a timing play between the pitcher and the first baseman, and the timing got messed up just a little bit when this ball was hit by Snyder. Here's the race to the bag. And you can see the throw a little bit behind him, but Porcello gets that foot down just before Travis Snyder arrives. But the timing was messed up just a little bit because that ball took a tricky hop right before it got to Prince Fielder, and he was able to smother it and then have to throw it overhead right away. Jeff Mathis, the catcher, and downstairs. Mathis has done a good job for the Blue Jays as the backup catcher to this point of the season. I think he and Dwayne Murphy have really clicked with the hitting philosophy. Mathis has opened up his stance a bit. Murphy said, listen, you're a big strong guy and you're athletic. You got to figure something out to get this hitting straightened out. Currently on a seven game hit streak. You know, everybody in baseball knows everybody. So Blue Jays were not unaware of Jeff Mathis everybody in baseball thinks they can fit, fix everybody well Dwayne Murphy I think has fixed Jeff Mathis they've opened him up like that and he said go ahead and swing hard it's just run hard but right to the shortstop Rick Porcello has got that sinker working he's picked up five ground ball outs already just nine pitches which dispatches the Blue Jays in the second in the TD Comfort Zone are lucky fans who have received a stadium seat upgrade tonight. The TD Comfort Zone, courtesy of TD. Come to the ballpark, think you've got a pretty good seat, and find out you end up with a great seat. Right from the front row down on the field. Great night, Friday night, group wide open. Do they even know a ball game was going on, those kids that we were <laughs> showing? <laughs> we have a very good view. And yes, she did. And here he is. Quinton Berry. 285 average. Got the ability to bunt squares and jumps back from that inside fastball. We mentioned Berry is 27 years old. He stole 242 bases in the minor leagues. 
He played collegiately at San Diego State and was coached by the Hall of Famer Tony Gwynn. And you'll see a lot of Gwynn's traits in his batting approach. Hits the ball the other way, utilizes his speed. Jim Leland talks about that speed being a pick me up for his offense and for his team. A little bit of a spark plug. He and Austin Jackson at the top of the lineup. That's dynamite when they're on base. One ball, two strikes, nobody out. Quinton Berry leading off the top of the third. Breaking ball lined into center field. That get downs for a base hit. A laid off single for Quentin Berry. <laughs> Welcome to those of you that have been watching the London Olympic opening ceremony. Those of you on West End Pacific, welcome to Rogers Stadium. The Detroit Tigers have taken a 2-1 lead. Miguel Cabrera got things started with a solo home run with two outs in the top of the first. Quentin Berry will run. He's 15 for 15 in steal attempts. He's not been caught. Well, he's got a big lead. Probably trying to draw a throw from Carlos Vienna away to see what his move is like. Not that big of a move by Vienna away. It's not that good, but what he does well, Carlos Vienna away, is he varies his times to home. He'll quick pitch the batter to help uh, the catcher to try. In a steel situation, he'll hold the ball a long time. Breaking ball. It's a ball on the strike. You can see Quentin Berry as he takes a lead. And I can bet you Tony Gwynn had something to do with this. Look at him looking in at the catcher, trying to see if he can steal a sign. Get a breaking ball sign. Tony Gwynn, the Hall of Famer, was his college coach. Driven into center field, but that'll hang up for Colby Erasmus. Cabrera's retired. Quentin Berry was also a schoolmate of Adam Jones's center fielder from the Orioles. So he's been around baseball a long time. Prince Fielder back in the first went back to back after Cabrera had homer. He gets a breaking ball in his first at bat against his former teammate Carlos Villanueva. Villanueva looked like he was trying to just slip a breaking ball in there, but Fielder is an excellent breaking ball hitter. It's interesting how the baseball world comes around. Prince Fielder's father, Cecil Fielder, his career really came together after signing with the Tigers. Had a 50 home run season, and he got his opportunity after starting out his career with the Blue Jays. And then Fielder gets hit by a pitch. Fans are booing just a little bit there, but Prince didn't make much of an effort to get out of the way of that fastball. Watch that front side just stay right there. He even kind of stuck that elbow out a little bit. Got to pitch him inside. At least show him that fastball in there. That time it, it wasn't that bad of a pitch, really. A pitch that he could have gotten out in the way of, but didn't choose to. Delvin Young walked his first time up. One out. On the ground. Laurie at third. Johnson at second. Back to Gomes. Double play. Well, the Blue Jays have been great at this all season long. Brett Laurie 
It's a hot shot right to him. Makes a good throw to Kelly Johnson, who turns the pivot at second very smoothly. That gets me in a way out of the top half of the third. Fans, the Olympics have begun, and why not pick up Sportsnet magazine on newsstands now? This week, we profiled 38 Canadian medal hopefuls as they prepare for London 2012. As well, the seven events you don't want to miss. So if you're going to watch the Olympics, why not pick up Sportsnet magazine on newsstands now, and it'll break down all the Canadian medal hopefuls. Anthony Ghost trying to utilize his speed bunts through that first pitch he was out early working with Tori Lavella on his bunting yeah Blue Jays are going to bring him out every night game at four o'clock and work on the bunting because they really think that that's a weapon that he can use and it'll really help him you get into a little bit of a slump if you've got that type of speed and if you can get the ball down on the ground that's a goes a long way of giving you confidence to scratch out those hits Right now he's a little bit raw as a bunter, so he's got to work at it. And Tori's going to help him along the rest of the season. Flashes that ball foul. Well, Anthony goes last year in Double A. They didn't have him bunt at all. They wanted to find out what kind of hitter he was. They let him swing three and zero. Oh. They let him just take any kind of approach he wanted, just to see where his talents was best suited. This year they brought the bump back into play. On the ground. Infante just in time to get ghosts. He's got great speed. Fans, stay with Sportsnet for complete coverage of the London 2012 Olympic Games. Day one of competition begins Saturday tomorrow. And you can see it all. On Pacific West Ontario and East, the 2012 Olympics from London. And I want to wish all the Canadian Olympians good luck as they begin their 2012 Olympics. There's a little looper off the end of the bat of Brent Flory. Sounded like it broke his back. Rick Porcello's got it working. We mentioned his last start Saturday. Against the White Sox. Reached Congress 6 1 and was really dealing. Yeah, you mentioned that he threw eight innings and then started the ninth inning. Went back and looked at his pitch count. He was just at 94 pitches. Yeah, he had finished eight innings with 88 pitches. Jim Layton wanted to send him back out there. He did, and the first two batters reached on singles, and then he made the pitching change. Omar Vizquel. Doubled and scored his first time up. This ball is hit deep into center, but Austin Jackson has terrific range and he gets there. The Blue Jays go down in order for a second time tonight. Just seven pitches by Rick Porcello.
Monday night, the Blue Jays and Tigers will wrap up their three games. Set the game starts at 1:07 p.m. It's the Blue Jays garage sale in support of Jays Care. Game used items, Blue Jays swag, and much more. Garage sale is at section 127, and you must have a ticket to the game to participate in the garage sale. For tickets, call the Blue Jays at 416-341-1234. Log on to BlueJays.com or stop by most Rogers Plus locations. The Blue Jays garage sale this Sunday. Brennan Bosch was a strikeout victim his first time up. This time he tries to bunt against the shift. He saw an opening and now Brett Lorry will move in to guard against that possibility. I think we're going to see that more and more around baseball with the exaggerated shift. The players start saying, you know what, if you're going to give it to me, I'm just going to lay one down and then force them back into a more normal depth in the infield. It has become fairly universal. Around the American League, we have seen many teams that were traditional ball clubs year in and year out. Kansas City Royals come to mind. Baltimore Orioles playing those full hitters with the three-man infield. It's like a pendulum. It has swung one way, and it's gone so far the other way with all the shift. Pendulum is now starting to shift back towards the middle, where the offensive team is starting to do things to make that defense change back. We have seen that with some of the left-handed hitters. Remember Carlos Pena dropping down a bunt on the Blue Jays. With two strikes. He's done that a couple of times this year. David Ortiz the same way. Here's the 3-1 pitch to Brennan Marsh. Hit hard on the ground. Jan Gomes will wave off the pitcher and go to the back. Honda CRV. Yeah, it does that. Honda, the official vehicle of the Toronto Blue Jays. Friday night game at Rogers Center, first of three against the Detroit Tigers, who are in town for the first time this season. Johnny Peralta struck out his first time up. Johnny Peralta is a very steady shortstop. He's had some big years with the bat. He's hit 20 home runs, but he doesn't have the flashy range. But boy, he's got sure hands, much like his partner, Miguel Cabrera, at third. If he gets to it, he's going to catch it. And he's going to record the out over at first base. You make a mistake, he's going to knock the ball out of the ballpark. Steady would be a, an excellent description of Johnny Peralta as a shortstop. Doesn't have that flash of some of the other big league shortstops around baseball or that style. He just goes out there and does the job day in and day out. He just turned 30 years old toward the end of May. And Jim Leland likes predictability. You know what you're going to get from Johnny Pearl. Well, it's driven deep down the right side and slices out of play. Peralta had a 24 home run season for the Indians in 2005 and two more 20 home run seasons in Cleveland and then last year with the Tigers in his first full season in Detroit hit 21 homers and drove in 86. He adapts well all coming up through the minor leagues. He'd be overmatched the first half of the season but then he would adapt and always had good seconds half good second halves to his season. Came up through the Cleveland Indians farm system, so John Farrell knows him quite well. Hanging tough, fouls off another pitch down and away. Farrell saw Peralta when he was playing for Cleveland. In a league championship series against the Boston Red Sox. He had a couple of home runs in that series. Another foul back. John was the farm director of the Indians when Peralta was a minor leaguer. Always thought that he would be a 20 home run shortstop. 
thought that at some point that he would have to move to third base because of his size, but it hasn't come to be. He can play shortstop. Change up. After fouling off a couple of tough fastballs, for all for strikes out for a second time tonight. Can jam that ball back in there. You see that ball way back in his fingers. And what that does when you put it back in your fingers, not the palm, back into the fingers, the lower parts of your fingers, you throw it just as hard as you can. And what that does, that gives you the illu illumination that it's a fastball. And he's got a good changeup. Catcher Alex Avila. It's a changeup, but it's sailed off the plate outside. Avila had a long at bat his first time up in the second inning and walked. Back to back changeups. Carlos needs to do that if he wants to stick around here longer. That was his 81st pitch already, and we're in the fourth inning. He needs some quick innings. For comparison's sake, Rick Porcello through three has thrown 31 pitches. And Porcello has always had that ability. Get quick resolution for that sinking fastball. And he's got it working. He threw just seven pitches in the bottom of the third to get the Blue Jays in order. One and two, two outs. Fastball is popped to left. Travis Snyder drifting back almost on the warning track. Yeah, makes the play. Carlos Villanueva has a one, two, three inning, top half of the fourth. It'll be. With the Detroit Tigers, he came up in 2009, but he's still learning. Take a look at his season so far. The first 10 starts, it was a battle for him. His ERA was over five. Whip was one and a half, and he gave up seven home runs. The last nine, he has been dominant. What's the difference been for Priscilla? Well, he's been more of a power pitcher. His windup takes his hands up over his head like a classic power pitcher, and he's using his fastball now to more. Both sides of the plate. So he's pitching in the lefties and he's thrown the ball away to left handers. He's able to get his slider into left handers now. And against the right hander, he's pitching inside just a little bit more with that great sinker. He also has the ability to go to the outside against the right hander. So he's just been a little bit more aggressive and unafraid of contact. There's some contact as Kobe Erasmus jumps on that inside fastball and drills it to center field and lead off single. 
Edwin Encarnacion has an RBI already tonight. He got three with one swing of the bat yesterday afternoon. He was measuring Tommy Malone, the starter, and finally got a pitch out over the plate. Malone was trying to go inside. He missed. Edwin didn't. 27 home runs now, and that one just energized the Blue Jays. Upstairs. He saw the numbers on Porcello. His last nine starts, he's allowed just one home run. So this is a classic head to head confrontation. Broken back, dribbler to short, Peralta to second in time, back to a first, it's offline. Kobe Rasmus went into the bag hard at second base. That ball was just a slow hit shot off the broken bat. You can see Rasmus getting an attaboy for his hard slide to disrupt the timing at second. You can see Infante backing off the bag. Another one of those power sinkers inside by Encarnacion. He knows he's got to hustle down the line to beat that throw. Initially, when I saw that throw to second base, it looked like Rasmus might have beaten him. I think that's what John Farrell is going to have his talk with Scott Barry about. Watch one more time as Rasmus goes right to the bag with his foot. He's on it, and that's close. Yeah, they could have called him safe for sure, and that's why John Farrell went out to make a point. Hey, don't assume because it's a double play ball that my guy's not going to get there. The Jays have really done a good job of that all year long. Yeah, they run the base as well, and they run them hard. That time it almost paid off for him. Kelly Johnson rounded the short his first time up. Long look at Brian Butterfield. Obviously, Porcello gets a lot of ground balls, so they might want to start the runner. Not going. And Johnson takes a pitch outside. It's a good time to run if you're going to run with Encarnacion. Edwin's done a great job of running the bases. He's 9 for 11 in steals. But he also gives you a great effort every time he's on base. Man in motion right here. Johnson's got a good enough eye also that if it's off the plate, he can read it. Not going. Cut on and miss. It might have something to do with why they're not running. Kelly Johnson has racked up a lot of strikeouts. Kelly has struck out 100 times this year. There goes the runner, and Johnson fouls it out of play. J. Pierre and Sebian is second to Johnson with 84 strikeouts. Colby Rasmus has 83. I think you got to take your chance. Even if he swings through it, Encarnacion's fast enough that he can steal it. And he goes again, and it's fouled straight back. Porcello, Porcello has just gotten three caught stealings in 17 attempts this year. Tori Lavello, the first base coach, will go over there and help the base runners. Help them read the signs in case they're missing it. Just give them a little bit of a verbal sign if you're going or not. Another full count pitch. There goes Encarnacion. The ball is outside, and Johnson takes a walk. So two are aboard against Rick Porcello with one out, bottom of the fourth inning. Tigers have a 2 1 lead. First baseman Jan Gomes.
Now Gomes was recalled from Triple Las Vegas on the 20th of July. He's after that first sinker and fouls it into the glove of the catcher. He has shown Jan Gomes in his very young major league career that he can make adjustments while he is at the plate. Got to start the other day in Boston was handcuffed through the first three games and then hit a double to right field crossing up the defense. Porcello chases Encarnacion back to the bag at second. But Porcello pours that ball right in on the hands of those right handed hitters. If you got like to get through the ball as a right handed batter you better learn how to get the head out and turn on the ball on that sinking fastball. Take one shot guess for a pitch in there and really try and hook the ball past Cabrera at third base. That'll change that pitcher's mind. Staying right in there. It's hard to do when you get two strikes. Mm -hmm. You always have that feeling that he's going to throw you a breaking ball and if you commit too early you're going to be vulnerable to that. Mm -hmm. Pretty good crowd on hand for the first of three against the Tigers and this has always been a popular attraction when the Tigers come to town a lot of people from southern Ontario make their way in love. Tiger fans here in Toronto over the years it's been a great rivalry. Same pitch same result. Yep, another squibber down the third base line. So I mean early in the count if you just go up there and look for the first pitch on the inner half and if you can hook one down that third base line. Next time you come up that pitcher will change his thoughts and maybe go to the outside. It's up to do with two strikes. Another 0 2 pitch. And Connor at second. Johnson at first. And with the four seam fastball elevated and got the strikeout. Travis Snyder will step in the box with two outs and he's done a nice job since rejoining the club. How about laying down a bunt to help the Blue Jays score a couple of runs. He only bunted one other time in Triple A this year. That one worked out and then staying on that Sean Doolittle pitch down and away. Leading a little left hander and that's got to feel sweet to Travis Snyder. Then he shoots a double the other way. Snyder took that pitch inside. He didn't even offer out. Looks like he's made up his mind. He's going to force Porcello out over the plate. Yeah, he has set his sights middle away. Another pitch inside didn't even offer at it. You hear us talk about that all the time. That's a good take right there. What we mean by that is he's got his weight still back on his back leg and his front shoulder is closed and his hands are in the hitting position. It means he's reading them. Lays off that change up. Three and up. Let him swing here. Why not? He's. Hit a couple of home runs already. Getting the green light. He stopped the outside edge. Three and one. Two outs. Nick Porcello has given up a single and a walk this inning. Got to load the bases. Second walk of the inning. First time through the order, Porcello had no problems at all. Came up a broken bat single to Edwin Encarnacion. Jeff Jones, the pitching coach, is out to have a chat with Rick Porcello. Looks like he's trying to make perfect pitches instead of trusting the movement yeah. on that fastball. Blue Jays are a little bit more patient this inning. 
With their first couple of walks this inning, they had good at bats, making him work. Tigers have been tough on the Blue Jays. They won 10 of the last 16 games these two clubs have played. That goes all the way back to September of 2009. Tigers themselves have won 17 of their last 24. Porcello has loaded the bases with a couple of walks. And Carnes shown at third. Johnson at second. Snyder at first for Jeff Mathis. Porcello through the first three innings through 31 pitches. Now he's thrown 23 this inning. Blue Jays are doing a much better job of laying off those borderline pitches. Yeah, and reading them a little bit better. That ball is hammered to left. Barry's not going to get it. And Connor Jones scores. Here comes Johnson. Snyder's being waved in. And there's no throw to the plate. Jeff Mathis, a bases clearing two out double. One of the things that was missing from the Blue Jays as they lost the first two games to the Oakland A's was the clutch hitting. This is as clutch as you can get right here. Two, two outs, a slider that is hung over the middle of the plate, and Mathis covers it to left field. Over the head of Barry and Snyder coming around third base. He cut that corner quite nicely to score all the way from first base. Eighth double of the season for Jeff Mathis. Blue Jays lead 4 2. You mentioned the struggles with runners in scoring position in the first two games of the Oakland series. Blue Jays were 0 for 12. And they lost those first two ball games. Anthony Ghost. Chases that high pitch. Ball in the strike. Ghost has a chance for his first big league RBI. Picked up his first extra base hit on Wednesday. Had an opposite field double hit into the left center alley. I think if he has that approach, the one you were just talking about when he doubled the left field, looked like just a single, but his speed turned that into a double. He'll pick up that first RBI. Speed pitch. Two balls and two strikes. Two outs. Blue Jays have scored three in the bottom of the fourth to take a 4 2 lead. It's quite an adjustment for a young hitter to come to the big leagues. Every game you're facing the best pitcher you've ever seen. Everything is nasty. No freebies. Got to really track the ball. Especially against Porcello. Track it, really follow it. Bouncing ball through into right field. Here comes Mathis around third. He'll score. Anthony Ghost bounced the ball past Prince Fielder at first. It was a tough hop for Fielder, and I wouldn't be surprised if they give him a base hit. Had a little problem with one of those earlier in the game. This ball is topped. Remember when Snyder hit one too, I mean, he had a little bit of a trouble with that one. This time it eats him up also with the speed of Ghost. He might have beaten it out anyway. It is a base hit for Anthony Ghost, and he picks up his first big league RBI. How about that first big league stolen base now? He is an aggressive, exciting player with a huge lead over first base. There is nothing 
that can energize a team quicker than speed. We saw it with Brett Laurie last year. And goes brings that same dimension to this ball club. We saw it in Boston when he scored on a double left field from first base. That energized the coaches. <laughs> the next day when we were asking about it. Every one of them said they've never seen that. Where a kid was able to score from first base on a ball. Not even to the wall in left center field at Fenway Park. 5-2 Blue Jays. There goes Ghost. Laurie takes it. Avila's throw. Not nearly in time. First big league steal for Anthony Ghost. Well, he gets a fantastic jump at first base. Take a look at the lead. One foot on the carpet right away. And he is over that bag by the time that ball gets in there. Pretty excited. Ball and a strike to Brett Laurie. Sinker down and in. That's a tough pitch. You have a tendency to think if I pull my hands and I can get to it. The best approach is to take it. Yeah, they can't do a whole lot with that pitch except maybe foul it off. Hope for one out over the plate. There goes Ghost. Just foul. Gary Darling, the third base umpire, was moving in position as Ghost broke from second base. Looked like there was going to be a play at third. And he was moving while the ball was hit. And Anthony Ghost should be proud of his first stolen base. He came against one of the best throwers in all of baseball. Alex Avila has thrown out 31 and a half percent of the base steals. He's an exciting player. And he probably still needs some seasoning. Yep. But I tell you what, he has made some adjustments already since he first joined the club. That's what the Blue Jays told us that he'll make adjustments and he will learn. He's a very quick learner. There he goes again. Ball is popped in the air into right. Brennan Bosch is there, makes the catch in fair territory. But the Blue Jays score four runs off Rick Porcello. Anthony Ghost with his first big league RBI and his first stolen base. After four, Blue Jays have a 5 2 lead. Now it's time for a Blue Jays Central update. Here's Hazel May and Greg Zahn in the Blackberry Broadcast Studio. A reminder, Sunday, Blue Jays and Tigers will wrap up this three-game series. The game starts at 1.07 p.m. The first 20,000 fans will receive a sports bag courtesy of Mr. Sub. It's Mr. Sub's sports bag day. 
For tickets, call the Blue Jays at 416-341-1234. Log on to BlueJays.com or stop by most Roger Plus locations. Great way to end up the homestand. Blue Jays will then take off and go to Seattle to start a three-city road trip. Popped in the air to left. Kind of Snyder camped under it. Infante's retired. Well, this is a key inning for Carlos Villanueva. Shut him down. After your team puts four on the board, shut him down. Austin Jackson. They mentioned Austin made some mechanical adjustments with his approach at the plate. Eliminated that high exaggerated leg kick and his timing is much better. Well, he's a lot quieter at the plate, if you will. Not a lot have a lot of movement that you saw earlier. Had a lot of strikeouts his first couple of years in the big leagues. And there was some question and some talk in spring training. Well, is this the guy that you really want to be your leadoff hitter if he strikes out that much? Struck out 170 times his first season, 182 last year, and there's too many wasted at bats. He drives this one deep to right. Anthony goes over near the wall, just runs out of room. Boy, he slammed hard into that wall. Not familiar with the surroundings here at Rogers Center, and he was full stride when he ran into that wall. There's something to be said for playing hard. But Anthony, not real sure. There's only a couple of feet from the foul line. You see it going in and disappearing behind the stands. Just a couple of feet be from the foul territory and then the, where the stands start. I think Jeff Mathis is just helping Ghosts regroup a little bit. I mean, he crashed into that wall. Remember, this guy's a center fielder. Yeah. He Hasn't was, played in the corner much. No, he, he was not real familiar with the balls that go into the stands like that. He's never had to deal with that. Ball is driven to left. Snyder backs up a couple of steps and makes the ground. Two outs. Let's check in with Hazel May. Yankees jumping on Aaron Cook. Cook giving up seven hits, six runs, and two home runs. Well, we knew this was going to be a tough stretch for the Boston Red Sox. Mm -hmm. Going to Texas and then New York. After facing the Blue Jays. <laughs> Blue Jays swept them in Fenway. The breaking ball is high. Quentin Barry is the batter. He singled against being away of its start the third inning. The Jays are going to have to go to their bullpen very quickly tonight. There's a good strike being a wave is now throwing 93 pitches. His season high is 102. And if he gets Barry starting the sixth inning, Cabrera fielder young. We saw a couple of pitchers down there that we might not have seen recently, but they've both been here. Evan Crawford, the young left-hander, has just rejoined the team as has. Joel Carino. They got here yesterday after flying all night from Fresno in California. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Top of the fifth. There's Carino. That's a foul ball. Well, I like watching Villanueva work. He knows himself better than anybody. And he knows what feels right to him tonight. 
with two strikes. Jeff Mathis wanted to change up. He said, no, I, I think I can slip a fastball in the inner half to him. They tried outside and now inside against Barry. Mathis said, I don't want that curveball. Don't throw me that curveball now. And that's a tough pitch with two strikes unless you have a real hard breaking curveball. Yeah. It is with two strikes just protecting the strike zone. Now they want the slider. But that slow curveball with two strikes is not a good pitch, especially to a left handed hitter. He is geared for that. He has shortened up his swing with two strikes. Curveball is going to come into it also. Villanueva is making his fifth start of the season, and boy, has he been a pleasant surprise for John Farrell. Yeah, the strikeouts per nine innings are his best. You can see that at 10, and he's getting a lot of it with that slider, but he's giving him a little bit more distance as he stretches out. And right now, he is throwing as well as anybody in that starting rotation. Base hit into right for Clinton Berry, his second hit of the night. So he's on with two outs. John Gomes made a valiant effort trying to get that ball, but it's well past him. He has shown a lot of range at first base. It's a good jump on it, it's just out of his reach. Miguel Cabrera homered in his first at bat and flied up to center. 326, 25, and 83. Drives this ball to right, goes his back in front of the wall, makes the catch. He ran it down very easily, and Ian Wave is through five. A couple of good defensive plays and a double play turn behind Ian Wave in this ball game. Five two Blue Jays. Bottom of the fifth, Omar. Vizcal takes a first pitch strike. Vizcal has a double already tonight. Just scored a run. Oh, and two. Porcello, it's been two different. Rick Porcello's in this ball game. He threw 31 pitches through three innings and had no problems. And things slowed down dramatically for me for 36 pitches in the fourth inning and gave up four runs. One of the big problems for Porcello in that fourth inning was the fact he fell behind. 
He just threw one first pitch strike to the eight batters he faced. And the Blue Jays were showing a lot more patience, especially on that sinker right off the plate and the changeup. Bouncing ball, easy hop for Peralta in time to get the scout. So we'll keep an eye on Rick Porcello and see if he can get back to that pattern and throwing first pitch strikes. Rookie left-hander Aaron Roof is loosening up. Probably Erasmus got things going in the fourth with a ringing single to center field. Set your sights down. That's where you're going to get that sinking fastball. The A's did a good job of elevating the fastball against Kobe Rasmus last series. Kobe was going out of the strike zone a couple of times. And that's not his game. Porcello has that good changeup that evens the count at a ball and a strike. On the ground, Infante at second base quickly turns in. What a pretty play. Omar Infante brought back to stabilize the second base position. And boy, he made a nice play, take a hit away from Rasmus. Showing some range right there at second base and then throws it. And he had to throw that ball before fielder got to turn around. He just had to throw it over towards the bag and hope that Prince turned around in time, and he did. You see Fielder, he was in that shot. He took a half a step towards the ball and then went back to first base. Found the bag and found the ball. Edwin Encarnacion hitting at 300 on the nose. Picked up that 71st RBI with a base hit to right. Two and one. Blue Jays really catch a break in this series, and if they don't see Justin Verlander nor Max Scherzer, two tough right handers. As Verlander pitched a no hitter here last year. On the ground. Johnny Peralta has it. Marcelo has another good inning. A one, two, three, bottom of the fifth. The fourth inning is only problem. Cost him four runs and the lead.
he picked up a loss already but he has been impressive he throws a lot of strikes and he's got a good breaking ball to take the sting out of the bat of the left it's going to be tough on the lefties because he throws across the cross fire action from the three quarter angle there are his numbers hasn't walked anybody throws a lot of strikes and he can get his curveball over when he is behind come back in and get that sinking fastball over at any time Carlos Villanueva in line for the win. He went five innings, just four hits. Two of those hits were home runs. The only runs he gave up tonight came in the first inning with two outs. Walked a couple and struck out three. Pitch count got up to 99 pitches through five innings. He had 29 in the first inning, really elevated it. So he is only able to get five innings. Now it's up to the bullpen. Prince Fielder homered in his first at bat. That was the first home run he's hit in the second half since the All Star break. And Luke does what has served him very well pitches ahead. Get ahead with the fastball, put him away with the slider. Yeah, Fielder had gone 58 straight plate appearances without a home run. That after winning the home run derby in Kansas City at the All Star break. Here's the 0 2. Mathis won that fastball upstairs. Oops, got that great breaking ball. He throws from that sidearm delivery, and it's really tough for left handed hitters to get to it. Righties have given up on it this year. Lefties have been frozen by it. There it is. That gets the strikeout. Taylor goes down first out. The all new 2012 Honda CRV. Yeah, it does that. Honda, the official vehicle of the Toronto Blue Jays. Good crowd on hand at Roger Center, 33,962 for the first of three against Detroit. Delman Young is the DH tonight. He's walked and grounded into a double play. This time he lines a single into center. With his first hit of the night, some board with one up. Right to the Brennan Bosch. Bosch has struck out and grounded up. They got a nice mix of experience and youth on this team. And Bosch is one of the young players just trying to get established in his big league career. Uh, he'll get better and better. Yeah, and book it. You know, this guy's going to hit 25, 30 home runs every year as soon as he gets it you can see he's a little bit more under control this year than he was last year when he was with the Tigers can be pitched to I think they're waiting for him to be a little bit more patience he's only had 15 walks this year and about 300 and 50 at bats First year his on base percentage was 320. It jumped up to 341 in his second season. I think the second season is your toughest year. Where players know you, pitchers know you. And with a throw to first, and Delman Young wasn't really sure which way to go. <laughs> Back to the bag. Marsh's on base percentage this season has dropped to 284. Just doesn't walk enough. Bouncing ball, Kelly Johnson to second for one. Biscell back to first, not in time. Bang, bang at first. Bosch, a left handed hitter, got out of the batter's box quickly. And keeps the inning alive. Kelly Johnson did a good job of attacking that ball and giving a good feed to Vizquel. Omar 
gets it off. But Boss just outruns the baseball. Omar has done that for years and years. At that time, Bosch got a running start on that ball. He's able to keep the inning alive. Two outs. Well, that was a big play for the Tigers, and Bosch beating out that return throw to first gets Peralta to the plate against the lefty. And you mentioned that he's got some pop. He's had some big home run seasons in his career. Just six so far this year. And over 300 at bats. But still very dangerous. Johnny's a low ball hitter. You can see the way he hits with hands held high. He just likes to drop the head of the bat on that baseball. Ball on the strike. Two outs. He's late on that pitch. He didn't see that ball very well out of hand. But Luke. Tigers getting their first look at Aaron Luke. And he's got a different delivery. It's a different delivery and it's very smooth. And he throws 93 miles an hour, 94. And when a pitcher is that smooth and the ball gets on you, it appears that it's a couple of miles per hour faster. And that never hurts. Push the hitter back so he's not comfortable. Now drop that breaking ball on the outside part of the plate. He did that to Dustin Pedroia when he was in Boston. Loop has a changeup, but we haven't seen him use it yet. He said he used it a lot when he was pitching in double A. He still not comfortable enough to use it just yet. Luke reaches for it. Vizquel bare hands and throws him out. What a play. Once a gold glover, always a gold glover. Omar Vizquel always practices fielding, bouncing balls with his bare hand. The 11 time gold glover. Makes a great play to end the inning. Quickly, in time to get Peralta. You buy the Aspire Travel World MasterCard from Capital One. And we're going to take a look at inside the numbers with runners on third, less than two outs. And this is in the majors. The Blue Jays are the best club of delivering that runner from third, less than two outs, 65% of the time. And that's great concentration and great focus for a ball club that does the little things. Yeah, they work very hard on those little things in spring training about maximizing their offense and that's one way to do it situational hitting runner on third base less than two outs figure out a way to get him in 
One of the plays that has helped the Blue Jays, I think, immensely with that. As a base hit for Kelly Johnson. Was the bunt with a runner at third base in less than two outs. The squeeze play. That was a big part of their game yesterday with the athletics. Travis Snyder had a safety squeeze bunt that led to two runs. Kelly Johnson's on base for a second time. Blue Jays lead 5 2. John Gomes squares to bunt, bunts it foul. And now, Blue Jays have the option of taking the bunt off and playing hit and run. Porcello throws it over, and he gives up a lot of hits. Six hits tonight. He has now allowed 147 hits. That's the third most hits allowed in the American League. So John Farrell, confident that Gomes will get something to hit if he chooses to start Kelly Johnson. Not a bad idea. Just to stay out of that double play. Tigers are thinking right along the lines of the possibility. Again, this time it's a good one. Porcello takes a look at second. Didn't have good position really to make a throw. And Johnson slides in on the sack punt. Good job by Jan Gomes. Put another base runner in scoring position. And now a, a choice here for uh, the manager, Jimmy Leland. Do you go ahead and walk Snyder and set up the double play? Now well, Leland's got a left-hander down in his bullpen, Dwayne Belo. It looks like he's just sitting back. Bullpen coach for the Tigers is Mike Rojas. Cookie Rojas' son. Been in the organization a long time as a minor league coordinator. Now he is the bullpen coach. One out. Looks like they're going to pitch to Snyder at least at the start of this at bat. Snyder had a big at bat his last time up. Very patient. They worked him inside early in that at bat. This time they start him out away. That could be trouble for Porcello. Yep. He stayed right on that pitch last time. Stayed on that one too. Jeff Mathis is on deck. He had the big hit in the fourth inning. Three run double with two outs. Boy, Snyder seeing the ball well. He's got a plan. That's the impressive thing about those three pitches that he just saw. That he has a plan. And that plan looks like he's going to see the ball away from him and think about left center field. Green light, 3-0. and oh, Bounces the ball to second, and Fonte throws him out. Kelly Johnson moves to third on the ground up. Jeff Mathis with the big hit last time up back in the fourth with two outs. Waited for that ball to get up, and it's a hanging breaking ball that just didn't bite. Stay right up into that hitting play, and Mathis smokes it to left field. And Ryan Butterfield sends that last runner. That's Travis Snyder comes around with the third run. Jeff Mathis, Mathis clears the bases with that double. Three RBIs in this game. It's the eighth time in his career he's had a three RBI game. His career high is six.
bounces this ball foul. July 23rd, 2008, against the Cleveland Indians. Jeff Mathis had a four for five day. Drove in six runs, had eight total bases. Pops this one up. Miguel Cabrera in foul territory. Makes the catch and the inning is over. Blue Jays get a leadoff single but can't do anything with it. We played six at Rogers Center. 5-2, Blue Jays lead. Hanging in there, as Hazel said, Adam Jones with his 25th home run. Chris Davis has also hit his 17th tonight. And he has been a pleasant surprise for the Orioles. He now has 48 RBIs. Aaron Loop will face Alex Avila to start the top of the seventh. This might be one of those one batter things. On the lefty. Loop against the left handed hitter in Vila, and then John Farrell might go to his bullpen again. Avila has flied out and walked. Brandon Lyon appears to be ready. And I think you're right on the money, Pat. He is standing ready now. And will probably come into this game no matter what happens to Alex Avila. Ball on a strike. Love to see young kids come up here fearless. Here's my fastball. Let's see what you can do with it. Loop was in double A this year. He wasn't even on the radar and has come up, and I think he's really opened up some eyes. Well, he's got an unusual delivery. He throws harder than we were led to believe. He's cross crossfire delivery. Steps towards that first base foul line and then has to be very difficult for hitters to pick up the baseball as he throws across his body and but hides the ball very well. This is breaking ball over. That's the key. He can get his breaking ball over. Batters have given up on it. When they see it coming towards home plate, they give up on it. It's got a lot of bend and a lot of break to it. Two balls, two strikes to lead off batter in the seventh. Avila had problems with his knees last year at the end of the season. Really bothered him in the playoffs. 
And I just don't know how healthy he is yet with those knees. That's his left knee, and that's that one that really anchors when he is at the plate. Little wings on it. Where all that weight goes when you are loading up to make your swing. Last year he had three, 273, 273 against the lefties. That's a good number. Yeah. For a young hitter. Blue Jays have a three run lead. Luke needs to challenge Avila right here. Make him earn his way on. And he did. It's a weak ground ball back to the mound. And right on cue, John Farrell has popped out of the Blue Jays dugout and he's made the call for the right hander. So Aaron Luke did a good job to record the first out of this inning when he gets the left handed hitting Alex Avila. A job well done by the young left hander. Goes an inning in the third, gives up just one hit. He'll turn things over to the veteran. Brandon Lyon coming into the game. Jays baseball partnership that may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of Rogers Blue Jays baseball partnership. Brandon Lyon was the winner of the game yesterday, pitched an inning in the third, didn't walk batter, and struck out three. That's exactly what the Blue Jays needed after Jason Frazier went down. They needed a veteran in this seventh inning area of a ball game. Seventh inning, eighth inning. A veteran who has been in these situations before. Doesn't get phased by any of this late in a ball game. Jay Pierre and Sevier. Having some fun with Aaron Luke. Sharply hit on the ground. Vizquel dives. Not in time as Omar Infante comes up with an infield hit. Vizquel popped to his feet quickly, but Infante legs out the infield hit. Still got those quick reflexes and quick actions. Those Vizquel, but just can't come up with the play. Austin Jackson, a leadoff batter. He's got over three so far. Hey. 
First pitch strike. Brandon Lyon knows this Tiger team very well. He pitched for the Tigers in 2009. Had a very good season, went six and five with a 2.86 ERA. And then he left Detroit, signed a lucrative three-year contract with the Houston Astros. Three years and 15 million dollars. Turned that one season with the Tigers into a very nice deal. Well, he can pitch. He comes out of that bullpen and he throws strikes. He can cut his fastball a little bit. Throw ball to change up. But the important thing is he throws strikes. He ties up Jackson with that inside fastball. And being a veteran, he's been around. I mean, nothing phases him. He knows how to set up hitters. He knows how to pitch to the batter's weakness and find the weakness and then go after it. One ball, two strikes. Infante at first. Just off the plate, Scarlett oh, caught the outside corner. Paul Emmel with a late call, and Jackson strikes up. Brandon Lyon caught the outside corner. When the umpire was backing away from the catcher, I didn't think he was going to call it a strike. It's a slider down and away. And the umpire watching him just back up and then punch him out. Jackson surprised. Slider again down and just on the block. Paul Emmel with a very deliberate call calls out Jackson. Quentin Berry has a couple of hits tonight. He singled to center and singled to right. I see Jackson in that dugout still shaking his head. Can't believe he was called out. This is a big out right here for Brandon Lyon and the Blue Jays. Two and oh. Brandon wants to get this guy right here. End the inning. Because of Cabrera on deck. Brandon Lyon has seen the impact of Miguel Cabrera first team. Tigers took a 2 0 lead in the top half of the first on back to back home runs by Miguel Cabrera and Prince Fielder. Edwin and Carter Show cut in that lead immediately with a single in the bottom half of the first. There goes the runner. Very fouls it back. Fonte was on the move. Interesting. The element of surprise as they gave Infante the go ahead with Cabrera on deck. Pitch. There he goes again. Strike three call. Mathis unloaded a quick throw to second. He couldn't wait for the umpire that Paul Emmel rings up Quentin Berry. The veteran Brandon Lyon comes out of the bullpen, gives up a single, and then strikes out a pair to end the inning. Good fastball on the outside edge.
Start things off in the bottom of the seventh, back in the fourth. Anthony Ghost accomplished another first. Had himself his first big league RBI. With a runner at second base, he hits this ball. It takes a tricky hop on Prince Fielder and ends up into right field. Jeff Mathis is going to score the fourth run of the inning, and Ghost is going to have his first major league RBI. Just after that, he got his first big league stolen base also. So he's an electric player. And now he's going to get a look at a new pitcher, the former Blue Jay, Fabio Dotel. And this is an anniversary of sorts. Dotel was with the Blue Jays on this date last year when he was informed that he had been dealt to the St. Louis Cardinals. In exchange, the Blue Jays got their center fielder, Colby Erasmus. So he comes full circle as he's back at Rogers Center on the date that he was traded away. Anthony Ghost shows what? Where was that? Right down the middle. Right down the middle, strike one. Coming by surprise. Looked like a pretty good pitch to bunt. Late again and fouled it off earlier this afternoon. He was out early with Tori Lavello trying to polish his bunting skills. Just learning how to track the ball and just get it down right now. That's the first step in bunting is getting it down. He'll work about moving right you know, later on. Maybe in spring training next year as you bring that back foot around. Start your movement towards first base. But right now it's just about tracking and getting the ball down on the ground. Downstairs. One of the things that Dwayne Murphy has identified is that he wants to get Anthony go started a little bit quicker. And if that sounds familiar, basically that's what they did with Jose Bautista. Get that front foot down just a little bit sooner to get your swing started. But when you're facing big league pitching every night, every guy that you face got good stuff, enough fastball and they will exploit weaknesses in a hurry. Coming inside. And it missed all the way across the plate. It's a lot for a young player to come to the big leagues and then still work on your game. We saw him earlier working on his bunny. Talk about the high, higher leg kick and maybe starting it a little bit sooner. It's a lot for a young player. So you don't want to feed too much to him too soon. Full count. Anthony Ghost leading off the bottom of the seventh. Brian Murphy really studying his young hitter. Get a feel for the timing and just where he is at the plate. Line drive left field, but that's going to hang up for Quentin Berry. And Ghost hit it hard. I like how the ball comes off his back. Where when he gets that stroke down right there, he's going to be dynamite. Take the ball the other way. Look at how far that ball carries to left field. And that is on a line. Back to the top of the order for the Blue Jays. Lead off man. Rick Glory has taken an O for so far. Holy Rasmus checking in with Murphy about Dotel once again. That's the one thing that people don't realize just how much work the hitting coach puts in. There's the pregame soft toss, the pregame batting drills, then regular batting practice, and then during the course of the game. He has to remember the strengths of all the pitchers that his team is facing. On top of all that work that you do in the cage and knowing each one of those hitters. You've got to do your little scouting report also. 
on the pitching staff that you'll be facing each series. And you can see the hitters go to him one by one. Okay, what, what do you have? And Murphy had a nice little book right there to talk about the pitching staff. Just a little sounding board. Some hitters study the pitches themselves, but they want to confirm what their thoughts are and say, okay, Murph, this guy's got a breaking ball, right? And he said, no, he's got a little cut fastball he'll throw in there. Just give you the right information. Ball is shot in the gap in right center. That's going to get down and go all the way to the wall. Lori is off to the races. He's around second, headed for third, and he'll slide in head first with the triple. His third triple of the season extends his hit streak to six games. And he wanted that right there. Dotel is a tough, tough right handed pitcher to hit. And he stayed right in on that breaking ball. Dotel tries to bend the slider, and Brett stays right with it and drives that ball the other way. And once it got past Bosch and Jackson, there was no way they were going to keep him at second base. He knew he was going to end up at third. As he turns it on around second base. Fired up. And he fires up the bench. One out Omar Vizquel with the drawn in infield. Vizquel squares to bunt. We showed that inside the numbers earlier. The Blue Jays the best in baseball. Getting that runner in from third base with less than two outs. 65% of the time they cash in. And that's one of the plays that has helped them to have that average up there, that little squeeze play. It's a safety squeeze. If it's down, then that speed of Lori can score. Squares again in the pitch out. That's the one challenge you have as a left handed hitter. All the catcher has to do is jump into that right handed hitter's batter's box and just with a veteran like Dotel, he'll just react. And it doesn't have to be a called pitch out. If the batter squares too soon, that's the beauty of the safety squeeze. That you, you don't have to get down. Dotel just wanting to make sure. You see, Cabrera was breaking in from third base. So the runner at third then can move right along with Cabrera, the third baseman. Lined into the outfield, let it get down and go all the way to the wall. Fiscal is on the move. He's going to head for third. And he's going to get there as there's no throw. Back to back triples. Omar came into this game without an extra base hit all season long. He had a double his first time up and his first triple this year. 77th of his career fastball up and they take the squeeze off. And Omar lays the bat on that ball for three. And he watches the play unfold as he's headed towards second. Sees the ball still on the warming track and jogs around with a triple. What a game for Vizquel. Made a tremendous defensive play in the sixth. With a barehanded grab of a slowly hit ball off the bat of Johnny Peralta. Two guys traded for one another, facing each other. Bobby Rasmus, July 27th a year ago, came to the Blue Jays for a package that included Octavio Dotel. Three and zero. Oh. One out. Vizquel at third. Rasmus had the green light. Nice. Good aggressive swing there. Infield in and looking to get that ball to the outfield. Look at Omar. 
Buck is not even breathing hard after that triple. <laughs> <laughs> when I was 45, I'd be sucking some air right there. Rasmus hits it into the outfield. Quentin Mary sets up this gal tags and holds at third. And Mary threw a strike. The home plate. Oh, wouldn't hit deep enough to test the arm of Quentin Berry. Yeah, I don't care who you are, you're not going to score. Omar, 45 years old, looks, looks like he's 25 tonight, making plays in the field and a couple of extra base hits. And he didn't know he was going to play when the original lineup was posted. Edwin Encarnacion. Edwin's got one for three tonight. Picked up that RBI with a base hit to right field. Went too far. Ball on the strike to Encarnacion. Dotel in his first inning of work. Got the first batter, Anthony goes. He hit that ball hard. Lined out to left and then back to back triples by Brett Lorry and Omar Viscount. Ball to hit. Yeah, he's missing his spots with that breaking ball. He wanted that one away from Encarnacion. He pulled it right into his power zone. He got away with a mistake there. Dotel's got some heat. Third in the American League and relievers in strikeouts per night inning with 13. So he's got a lot of weapons to get you out with. High end. Deep into the outfield, the left fielder Quentin Berry is called off by Austin Jackson, and Encarnacion is down to end the inning. But Omar Vizquel picks up an RBI with his 77th career triple. He drives it to the gap in right center, driving home Brett Lurie, his first two extra base hits of the season in this game tonight. Why not grab some buds? Please enjoy responsibly. Jeff Mathis has been around a long time. He knows with Rick Porcello, you got to get the ball up. His first time up, the ball was down, and he hit a ground ball to the shortstop. Well, his second time up, they've got the bases loaded, and he's going to make him elevate that baseball when he does. Look at this one, right? Belt high, and he's able to drive that ball off the wall left field for three RBIs, opening up this ball game. Smart hitter gets our smart play tonight for the Blue Jays. Veteran hitter 
knew what he had to do to cash in against Rick Porcello, and he has given the Blue Jays the lead tonight. New pitcher for the Blue Jays will be the veteran left-hander Darren Oliver. Oliver worked in yesterday's ball game. This is his 42nd game of the season, two and two, with a 1.19 ERA. All he does is just come in and throw strikes, moves that ball around the strike zone. Has a great feel for pitching. He's been doing it for a long, long time, and he has now been entrenched in that eighth inning now for John Farrell's Blue Jays. Blue Jays could have an interesting combination back into the bullpen now with the addition of Brandon Lyon and Oliver, and then Jansen. That's been a pretty effective combination in the eighth and ninth. We see Jansen. Standing ready. There's a strike. But now with Brandon Lyon, according to the matchups, you can use Oliver in the seventh to close out that inning and then bring in Lyon. Or as they did, bring Lyon in in the seventh. He closed out that innings with a couple of strikeouts and then turned things over to Aaron Oliver. Well, the thing that both of them do, veterans, is they throw strikes. They'll come out of that bullpen. They aren't phased by the situations. They get, they get strikes. And there are two veteran players, pitchers that the young pitchers down at the bullpen can learn a lot from. Miguel Cabrera shoots one into right. Anthony Ghost plays it off the wall. Here's the throw to second. He's got a good arm, but Cabrera will beat the throw as it was offline. All new 2012 Honda CRV. Yeah, it does that. Honda, the official vehicle of the Toronto Blue Jays. Beautiful CN Tower high above the Rogers Center. Miguel Cabrera with his second hit of the night and lead off double in the eighth. 28 doubles, 25 home runs. He's some hitter. So is this guy. This guy's no slouch. <laughs> wow. 309. Mm. Bouncing ball up the middle. That'll get through. Cabrera's being waved home. Here's the throw from Rasmus. It's on the money. And it's a high tag. John Farrell is going to argue with Paul Emmel, the home plate umpire. And it looked like Mathis tagged him high on the hip. Cabrera just kind of sauntered around third as if he didn't expect there to be a throw. Yeah, down by four runs at the time on a single. You don't want to be running into it out. And he was. But I think if if we watch the replay from where we are, it looked like he might have got his foot in before the tag because the throw was high. Jeff Mathis just couldn't keep him off the plate. Let's watch the throw. Mathis locks himself in right here, but then here comes the tag, and it looks like it might have been high. And Cabrera, watch the foot of Cabrera as it knocks Mathis's foot off home plate. They appeared to be safe. Yeah. Just couldn't keep him off the plate. Just couldn't block him off the plate. Rasmus made a strong throw. And I still think that Cabrera didn't expect yeah. the throw to the plate. I, I didn't expect, he probably didn't expect that he was going to be sent home. Delman Young fouls it back. It's a ball in the string. Being down by four runs, played at one base at a time, but he ends up scoring. Prince Fielder with the RBI. It's ISO on Miguel Cabrera. That's Gene Lamont sending him all the way. And he just didn't have a real good turn at third base, but it's a good aggressive slide to score the run. This has popped up and playable up the third baseline. Lori calls for it, and Mathis peels out of the way. 
third baseman took charge. Still just one out. Brennan Bosch has an 0 for 3. You know the thing about Darren Oliver is you're going to get a result in about three pitches. He doesn't waste any time. This is his fourth batter of the inning. They've had a double, a single, and a pop out. He's only thrown 11 pitches. And he'll tell you, he has to be conservative. He's 41. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't have a lot of bullets out there. Does a good job, boy. Yep. Yeah, comes right after you. He keeps his body under control. And he controls the bats. Never gets himself into bad hitter counts. Never seems to be in a rush, but still is in a hurry. A hurry to get out. Good slow breaking ball. Top of the eighth inning, Tigers have scored a run. Big insurance run for the Blue Jays in the bottom of the seventh. Omar Vizquel with an RBI triple. Thousand out of play. This is interesting. How good Cabrera and Fielder are. Everybody in the world knows you've got to pitch carefully to them, and they've driven all runs in the game for the Tigers. They're great hitters. Probably they not good the, run producers. Yeah, great run producers because they're they're established hitters. The Tiger team hits a lot of doubles. And when we talk about the Boston Red Sox, we talk about it in the same way that they're good hitters. And Oliver makes a great pitch and strikes out Brennan Marsh on a breaking ball. Get out of that strike zone. Breaking ball away. That is the curveball for Oliver, and he picks up a big out. Johnny Peralta got it out his last time up. He's had a tough night, a couple of strikeouts and a ground out. John Farrell is big on matchups and he's big on a history. Peralta is two for nine against Darren Oliver. So when Farrell makes his decisions on how he's going to utilize the bullpen, pays a lot of attention to hitter matchups. We've got the, the same numbers as we do. And this is all pre-game thought process. Okay, if I get into the eighth inning. And I, I've got the lead. I've got Darren Oliver out there. I want to know what the matchups are. To start this inning, Oliver came in to face the leadoff batter Miguel Cabrera. Cabrera was 0 for 4. Obviously, a limited amount of advance. But Oliver had success against him. Slow breaking ball looks so inviting, and you commit, and he takes a little bit more off. And yeah, about halfway to home, it looks like it's going to be a strike. So you start your swing, and all of a sudden, it's gone out of the strike zone. Two nights in a row for Darren Oliver on the mound.
How about that? He elevated the fastball. It was 87 miles an hour, but quick enough to get by Johnny Peralta. Dan Oliver gives up a run, but strikes out two to end the inning. Now it's time for a Blue Jays Central update. Here's Hazel May and Greg Zahn in the Blackberry Broadcast Studio. Watch the Rogers Cup presented by National Bank August 6th through the 10th on City TV, Sportsnet 1, and FX Canada. Great tennis action coming up August 6th through the 10th. The Rogers Cup. The crowd on hand tonight and they've been entertained to a good ball game. Blue Jays got behind early, but they stormed back. Game turned around with four Blue Jay runs in the bottom of the fourth. New pitcher for the Tigers is Dwayne Bilo. Bilo, left hander out of the bullpen, one of three lefties that Jim Leland has in the bullpen. Through a 1 3 27 earned run average. Fastball slider type of pitcher. Doesn't throw that hard. And yet right now he has struggled his last few times out. Uh, command issues. Kelly Johnson goes after the first pitch and hits it high and deep into left center. Austin Jackson gets there right in front of that wall. Jan Gomes dropped down a perfect sacrifice bunt his last time up. He is 0 for 2 in the ballgame. Gomes is scheduled to catch tomorrow. And Jeff Mathis the day off. Jesse Jansen loosening up. It's a three run Blue Jays lead. Yeah, John Farrell was asked before the game about Jan Gomes that he goes, hey, he is my backup catcher. And he will spell the starter, which is Jeff Mathis. Day game after a night game tomorrow. So Jan Gomes will be behind the plate. J.P. Aaron Sebia on the disabled list with that fractured hand. One and two, one out. Bounced into it. Jan Gomes has caught in three games. He has not made a big league start as a catcher. Breaks his back. And ball bounces to Infante who throws it away. Gomes is headed for second. Now he's got to get back to first and nobody's on the bag. That bat shattered. The barrel of the bat went right over Travis Snyder's head and hit up against the backstop. 
high on the screen. There you see the barrel end. Infante had to wait for the ball to come down. A little looping ball, and when he got it, he threw quickly and threw it wild. You know, and to his credit, John Gomes didn't hang around the box. Not much left to that bat, but he took off, and that made it a little bit tougher on Infante. Infante is charged with the air. First air in the ball game. Travis Snyder. He walked and scored in the four run fourth inning. for Travis Snyder. First one was off of John Lester. Travis Blackley and now Dwayne Belo. And that ball was a jolt by Snyder. Down and in. He's had good at bats tonight. He has had a plan when he has gotten in there and he belts that one. Not a lot of movement from the lower half. The bat comes through. No doubt about that one. Big swing and a hard home run to the seats. Jeff Mathis goes after the first pitch and pops out to the shortstop. Travis Snyder, prior to this season, had two career home runs against lefty pitching. He's hit three since he's come up from the minor leagues. Well, that's a great sign. He's had good at bats all night long. Yes, he has. Off of Porcello earlier, it looked like he had a plan. And he stayed right with him. He walked just ahead of that Jeff Mathis double in the third, or excuse me, in the fourth inning. And then advanced Kelly Johnson to third base on a ground out in the sixth inning. They see Jansen. Now the Blue Jays have a five run lead. It is not a save opportunity. But he appears to be loosening up. He hasn't had a save opportunity since the 14th of July. Anthony goes with a big swing. Those strikes out. The inning is over. But the Blue Jays get some insurance in the bottom of the eighth. Travis Snyder with a two-run shot to the seats in right center. His third home run against lefty pitching this year, Casey Jansen, into the ball game.
including that lopsided loss to the Yankees tonight. Casey Jansen into the ball game in a non-save situation. Happened in yesterday's ball game. Casey Jansen needed some work in a 10 to 4 game. Had to come in through an inning. Had a strikeout. A sparkling earn run average of 2.3. 13 for 14 in saves. Alex Avila lifts a lazy fly ball into right. Anthony Ghost gets there on pitch one up for Casey Jensen. That's what John Fair would like to see more of this inning. Just a quick inning. Yeah. Get through it easily and then have Jansen ready for tomorrow. First pitch outs. Is there anything that you can do as a manager when you see those situations happening, a three run lead as you go to the ninth inning? Your team scores two runs like that. You've got your closer up working. Is there a way that you can not bring him in and maybe save him for tomorrow? Well, and managers really wrestle with that all the time. He gets your guy ready emotionally. He's pumped up, ready to come into the game. He's got to be thinking about the save. Mm -hmm. And then he had a two run home run. Now he's got to shift gears a little bit. But most managers will stick to that guy. Unless he's been pitched an awful lot, and that's not the case with Casey no. Jensen. Yeah, he, he was off for a long time before he pitched in yesterday's game. And, and you don't want to get your closer up in a three-run lead save situation and have somebody throwing with him. What does that tell tell the guy? Quick work. He dispatches Omar Infante with the strikeout. Now for a preview of what's coming up on Connected. Here's Jamie Thomas and Ryan Leslie. All coming up right after this ball game. Casey Jansen pouring that fastball in there to Austin Jackson. Tigers down to their last out. Jackson has gone over four. He struck out in the seventh. Casey Jansen has thrown seven pitches, six for strikes. Thirty three thousand nine hundred and sixty two on hand for the first of three against the Tigers. Two balls, two strikes. Broken bat, Vizquel behind second, spins and fires, ball game. Blue Jays win the first of the series against Detroit. Omar Vizquel had some night. He hits a couple of extra base hits, his first two extra base hits of the season, drives in a big insurance run in the seventh. And isn't it fitting that the last ball of the game is hit to Omar Vizquel so he can show a little bit more magic to finish it off? Hitting up and down the lineup. Nine hits, eight runs for the Blue Jays as they beat the Pirate, or excuse me, they beat the Tigers in the first game. Omar Vizquel, it's got to be the star of this one. Great job by Omar Vizquel. Gets a big hand from his skipper, Travis Snyder, with his third home run of the season. Casey Jansen, just 11 pitches. Blue Jays win the first of three. Stay tuned, connected. Coming right up. <laughs> 